action. All right, action. That's a good word for the day. Action, taking action, moving towards the intended vision that we aspire to fulfill, that we aspire to embody. Um, and you know, the more action we take, the less resistance we feel. But it is the beginning of the action taking where the most amount of resistance rears its head. Uh, it's it's one of those things. That is the that is the journey that we are all on as artists, as creators, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, I just I had a big conversation with one of our marketing people uh, yesterday, just around her coming up against the resistance to actually like make the cold calls, follow up with the emails, follow up with the follow ups, all the things. Um, last month I did 28 days of YouTubing and uh, it was amazing, highly creative, productive experience for me. It, it's, it's made me fall in love. I'm a YouTuber now. I'm officially a YouTuber. I've kind of like moved away from that for a lot of years. I've been posting like more talking head stuff on YouTube, but I'm now officially a YouTuber. I'm posting every day on my new Body Mind Swing channel and having so much fun. So when I was doing that challenge, Every day there was resistance, like, oh, I don't have anything to say. I don't know what to do. Uh, how can I make this creative? I just want to get it done. Move through the resistance. Now it's like my, my buddy who's also, he's a much bigger YouTuber than me, but uh, he's just been commenting. He's like, dude, you're like creating two videos a day on your channel. I'm like, I can't stop. So that's what happens. You take enough action and momentum is the thing that you access once you move through the resistance and you push, the, push those boundaries. Uh, right now I'm doing a, a 30 day fitness challenge. So every single day doing a high intensity Tabata workout. Yesterday, middle of the afternoon, I had my 20 minute block where right before transitioning from work to Soren, and it was just like, I don't wanna do this. I'm tired. I'd rather go meditate on the couch. I'm like, this is the only time you're gonna be able to do this. If you don't do it, you owe your buddies 50 bucks. Do you wanna owe them 50 bucks? This is like, no, I don't. Soon as I started, the moment I picked up the first kettlebell, it was just like, oh, why would I resist such a thing? I just released a video this morning about how I used to resist practicing in golf. All I wanted to do was play, but practice is play. And so no longer is the resistance there to getting better. And so all of the rant, the whole purpose of the rant is like, let's become aware of the resistance. The resistance might be procrastination. It might be cleaning the house when we're supposed to be working. The, the resistance might show up as fear. It might literally be like cold sweats. Uh, the resistance can show up as self-sabotage like not following through on things we said we would do and not even knowing why we're not following through. There's so many ways in which resistance shows up for us in our life and as creators or with our partners or on the things that we say we want to do. And so why is it that we resist the future we're trying to create? And that the reason is, is because there's an unknown, there's uncertainty. If we take this action forward towards the thing that we most desire, whether it's being a coach, making money through our business, being a famous artist who's up on stage is doing their thing, whatever it might be. The reason we resist that is because there's this gap between where we are and where we want to be. And that is the unknown we have to walk through. And our subconscious makes up all sorts of reasons and excuses as to why we should be afraid of that gap, why we should procrastinate why we should just stay where we are why we should just turn on netflix and ignore the big goal that we have over here and that is the thing that we have to overcome and we just need to take the next step like yesterday just picking up the kettlebell i was like oh i'm already doing the thing i'm doing it now i'm not resisting it i'm actually in it and so we have to like action is the cure to overcome the resistance because as soon as you start the action as soon as you open up the document and you actually start typing your whether it's a book or a story or whatever you're doing, I get this every time I write a kid's story. It's like, ah, oh, here's that blank canvas again. I gotta figure out words to say and turn it into a story. This is hard. I wanna smash my head against the wall, but you just gotta like push through it. And I mean, sure, we could try and meditate it away, 
But what is meditation when action is the cure? Meditation is a form of procrastination. Centering yourself before your practice, great. Center yourself before your practice. Go for a hike to get yourself into an elevated state of being, but then go sit your ass down at your desk and do the thing that you got to do. So if we can just overcome the resistance, we can accomplish anything. And what I've been uh, experiencing in my own personal life, uh, this last, I don't know what's going on, but it feels like resistance be gone. It feels like, I'm just showing up and doing the damn thing and I'm not questioning it anymore. And I'm just like, okay, this is the next thing. I'm going to do the next thing. And then I'll be done the next thing before I even realize that I had resistance to begin with. That's my cure for resistance. It may work differently for you. You may not be as forceful as I am about like, just get over it and get on with it. But uh, that's what's worked for me. I've found action to be the greatest cure for overcoming resistance and moving shit forward. Now, if anybody else has a cure out there, let me know your cure for resistance. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. Is resistance holding you back from getting somewhere you want to go? Um, oh, and I will also just add a great way to overcome resistance is to set a clock for 30 minutes of like, okay, I don't want to do this thing. I'm going to do the thing for 30 minutes though. And just like set the alarm. Cause by the time you get through 30 minutes or 20 minutes, you start to get into a flow and no longer is it like holding you back. Starting is the hardest part. That's my rant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think so. Um, I was thinking about this a little bit in the last couple of days. Um, and kind of talking myself through it. And it's like, if you don't have a level of resistance, it's not new enough. Like, I was like, oh good, I feel scared and I have resistance and I don't wanna do it. Oh good, then it's the right step because all of that's coming up. And I was like, well, maybe like, if it is comfortable, then it's not big enough. Um, so I've been like talking myself through it that way. And that's been actually really helpful. Um, so yes, take action, but also just like that affirmation that, yeah, it's new. That's why the resistance is here. Go for it. So that was fun. I'll jump in. I got a little course on this. We should drag it into this space if people want. Um, so one of the ways, one of the things that over the years, I, for, if you don't know, I used to train coaches and one of the big sticking points that coaches would come with are like, well, what happens when my client hits resistance and while well, they're resisting and they're not doing the thing. And then the coach makes themselves wrong and they make their clients wrong and clients are making themselves wrong. And like, if, if we are not experiencing resistance from my view, we aren't engaged in a change process. And so anytime we're trying to change something, especially creating new habits, new patterns, going for new dreams, there's going to be an equal and opposite resistance that shows up. And part of that is because we are creatures of habit. We are pattern creatures. And so when we try to move into, like, I love what you said, it's like, we're going into the unknown, right? And there are going to be things that are uncomfortable about that. And, and part of our being wants to, even if our biggest dreams is for change, the unconscious part of us wants to keep things the same. And so as soon as we start to shift and move into these new places, then we're going to experience resistance. And I love the different notes that you made Bradley about what that resistance could be, because it can show up in all sorts of ways and insidious ways and tricky ways. But part of the mechanism of what is happening is that our identities are threatened, that we have particular stories about who we are and how the world is, that when we try to create a change is going to start to mess with those identities. So one of the ways that I love to play with resistance is to, yes, just do the thing, get your ass on the mat, all of that, and metaphorically and literally, when resistance is to yoga, <clears throat> don't ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> But the, it's also, um, my friend TJ had this really great term for how he talks about the voices in our head that are trying to give us well-meaning advice to keep us safe. And that is your stupid friend. Like the friend that's, you know, that, that are, and even that our resistance patterns are like 
our stupid friend. No, you don't want to get to the gym. No, you don't want to reach out to that person and do that risky thing. Is there, it's well-meaningly, your resistance is a part of you that's well-meaning and trying to keep you safe. And so it's trying to carry out something that if you create this change, feels like it's at risk. And I find that can be a really interesting inquiry. Like, okay, this pattern that I've got going, how is this actually trying to do something kind for me? And is there a different way to meet that kindness where I can still do the new thing? For example, if your your thing is, okay, I want to I want to be visible and put myself out there, but I'm terrified. And so instead I keep doing these other make work busy things. It's like, okay, so that's trying to ensure that I'm not going to be rejected or that's trying to ensure that I'm not going to be humiliated or whatever the fear is. So looking at what are ways that I can create a sense of relational safety and acceptance in my nervous system and then go do the thing. So it's, it's like the doing the thing and what's my resistance trying to do that's actually doing, it's like, it's doing a good job of it, but it's limiting me from being able to move into a new space. How do I do both move into the new space and regulate myself and take care of myself so that this little resistance gremlin is actually going to let me move into the change process. So that's my rant. That's great. Beautiful addition and extra perspective. Mm -hmm.